The tension is palpable in the capital city, where the central bank was locked down today. A bomb scare closed the road to the airport, forcing travellers to walk. The defence secretary resigned, though he insisted authorities had followed up on foreign intelligence warnings. More than 70 people have been arrested. As soldiers scoured Colombo for six more suspects, the government actually reduced the official death toll from 359 to between 250 and 260. The miscount due to so many bodies not being intact. The lower death toll is likely of little comfort to the thousands of people facing unbearable loss. Senior correspondent Susan Ormiston is in Sri Lanka to give us a glimpse of their suffering. Every casket bears a story, and amidst all the grief this week, some are particularly poignant. Mourners flock to remember a prominent physician, a wound specialist, no less, who died of his own injuries in the suicide bombing. Sanath Fernando and his wife Wales both died, leaving behind a rich community life and three children. The eldest, Darren Jali, rushed home for medical studies in China two days ago. It's a hard time for me because my parents were everything for me. This week, attending a funeral like this one means a pat down, a search, vigilance particularly tight around churches attacked last week. The Sri Lankan Air Force is helping to fortify security, especially when it's Sri Lanka's highest ranking Catholic, the Archbishop, giving the funeral mass. Darren Jali's youngest brother was in the church last Sunday, standing right between his parents at mass when the blast threw them apart. She believes that in dying, one on each side, her parents protected her brother so he could live on. How do you feel about the people who did this? I just don't have words to express my feelings towards them. They have no humanity in them. How could you do, do such things for people like this? They're innocent people. Many are resisting letting go, struggling to accept the sudden brutal shock and the idea that this might have been avoided if only warnings of a growing threat months ago had been acted on. Instead, Colombo is filled with checkpoints and searches. Nearly 10,000 military deployed. Warnings of secondary threats circulate its tents. The scars still so obvious. A bomber staying in the Kingsbury Hotel blew himself up in the restaurant. Forensic investigators haven't finished their work, so the restaurant can't be cleaned out. Even so, the general manager is determined to reopen hotel rooms tomorrow. You know, when you, you stay in a place which has been damaged, you um, resuscitate a lot of what has happened. So by opening also, it's opening a new door for us, you know, moving on and, you know, be positive about the future. That's aspirational, but hard, with the tragedy still so fresh and its damage to lives forever. Susan Ormiston, CBC News, Nigumbo. Sri Lanka.